Looking after your parks in Jurassic World Evolution 2 can feel overwhelming at times. You have dinosaurs and guests to look after, and failing to meet the needs of either will result in sometimes catastrophic consequences for the park. So I thought I'd make this video to make park management easy to understand and tell you everything you need to know to succeed. Also, since the challenge scenarios are the only ones which offer any, well, challenge, these are going to be what I focus this guide on since beating them trains you up to run any park smoothly, no matter what happens. When you get started in any game mode, there are a few buildings that every park is going to need before you get started. Most of the time they are already placed for you, but if not, you need the control centre, which of course acts as your base of operations, and provides staffing capacity and allows you to manage and perform certain operations. A hatchery, which allows you to synthesise eggs and hatch them to create new dinosaurs. A science centre, which will allow you to conduct research and unlock everything from new dinos to new buildings, as well as process any fossils you collect. A staff centre, but this can be done later when your staff needs rest to avoid sabotage. A backup generator to power everything in those early days. Also, depending on the map, it'll be wise to build a response team quite early, as it will allow you to catch wild or escape dinosaurs, but this can normally wait until you need it. Now your objective early on is to do anything you can to pull in some guests and increase your profits and it all starts with a dinosaur. Most of the time you're going to create something like some Struthiomimuses, which are relatively cheap and provide a small amount of pack rating. Some maps will have dinos running wild so you can either sell them for extra cash or place them in enclosures for extra pack rating but as a word of warning you may not have the capacity to house them comfortably early on and doing so can bankrupt you if you aren't careful so be cautious and don't be afraid to sell them you can always hatch your own later. They need to hatch these Struthios into an enclosure and provide vision for the guests, for them to count towards the pack rating and start to bring in more. At about this time you'll also receive some missions and when you do it's best to pick things that you're going to achieve anyway, like increasing your guest count or pack rating since you're going to be getting paid for simply playing the game without going out of your way to do something specific. Once this is done and you're not hemorrhaging money too quickly, you want to send off an expedition to collect some fossils for you for your second species. This will require an expedition building, but with most levels, the starting capital you get should be more than enough to cover all these heavy costs. You want to find something that can live with the Struthios, so take a look at their social tab and you'll see that they like pretty much anything that isn't going to hunt them down. The exact dinos you can grab are different per scenario, but if you aim for some small or medium herbivores such as the Amargosaurus, that should work just great. Once you've hatched and released your second dino, you should pass a 1 star rating and start making profits for the first time. At this point you essentially rinse and repeat by finding more species and releasing them into the park to increase your park appeal and pull in even more guests. But of course the game would be too easy if you could just release everything into the same paddock and let them roam free. Dinosaurs have complex needs and staying on top of them is the only way you can have a successful park. Dino needs are possibly the most important thing to keep an eye on since happy and comfortable dinos are going to remain docile and not attempt to break free from captivity or fight others inside their home. Failing to meet their needs will result in fights and escapes and all of these things cost you time and money. Let's start with the basic needs by clicking on a dino. If this page is blank then you'll need to perform a status check on the dino with a ranger team in conjunction with a ranger station inside your paddocks. These will ensure the rangers periodically patrol to make sure everyone is alright. On the first tab we can see what they're doing and how they're feeling, alongside how comfortable and healthy they are, as well as their food, water and stamina levels. This is all surface level info, but if something is going wrong you'll be able to see from here by their levels going down or an alert. The next tab is comfort and this is split into two sections, territory and environment. Territory shows you how happy they are to be sharing space with other species, how large an area they are taking up, and how large a population in their paddock they can take. Environment shows you everything they need in their territory, such as food, water, and other features like forests and sand. Whenever you release a new dino, you want to click and find this tab first and create an area for them that satisfies all those needs without screwing over any of your other species. Next is ailments, and this will show you if a dino is sick and what you can do to treat it. Some ailments can be treated via ranger teams administering medicine, some require transport to a medical facility, and some, like the common cold, must simply be monitored until they naturally get better. We're going to skip appeal since that's more to do with guests than with dinos, and go right to social, which is our final dinosaur needs tab. This one is most complicated and it shows you that species social group, who they are sharing their paddock with, and their cohabitation preferences that we took a peek at earlier. This is how you're going to plan out your paddocks, as having individual habitats per species can be expensive and take up a lot of space, especially earlier on. Every species has their own individual preferences, but for the most part, they follow some common trends. Most herbivores are quite happy to share with most things that aren't going to hunt them down and kill them, with the exception of Ankylosaurids and Ceratosaurids, who are a little more critical of sharing with others. Carnivores are of course a little more territorial, and most of the time want a habitat to themselves, with the odd exception. Of course there are exceptions to all of these rules, but if you're ever unsure, just check the social panel of a dino and pair them with whatever they like and whatever likes them. 
Just be cautious of creating too large a population in the paddock, as some dinos have a limit of how many other species they can take before they start to freak out. So to summarise dinosaur needs, you need to make sure they are in a large enough area that provides them with the correct amount of food and water and other terrain they like. You need to keep them healthy whenever they get sick and give them the appropriate treatment. And finally, you need to make sure they are being housed with other dinos that all get along with each other to avoid fighting and general discomfort. These rules also apply to aviaries and lagoons, so as long as you check on everybody, you should be golden. Just make sure you have a medical facility and a response team available to react should the worst happen, just in case. If you stay on top of all of this, you should have a fairly uneventful park and be able to focus on your guests. Now these are the second most important needs in the park, as they pretty much dictate your success and if you are bringing in any money. Having dinos is all well and good, but if no one comes to see them because your park is so crappy, you're not going to last long in this capitalist hellscape. Once you have dinos in your enclosures, you need to make sure guests can see them, and this can be achieved by a variety of methods. You have various types of viewing platforms, as well as attractions that can take you into the paddocks themselves. If you've built all these and your visibility is still low, then open the visibility view and take a look around to find out where you have any blind spots. Also bear in mind that dinos move around, so visibility shifts up and down as they come in and out of view, so it's not really anything to worry about. Once you have high enough visibility, your park rating will increase and more guests will be interested in your park. Once this happens, they're going to start demanding various things, and you can see all of these in the Guests and Amenities tab in the Park Rating screen. On the Guest Comfort tab, you'll be able to see your rating for a number of things. Transport shows you how easy the park is to get around. At the start, this will be 100%, since you can easily walk around. But later on, when you have a much larger sprawling park, you're going to want to ensure it's easy to move around with a monorail system. Restroom coverage, of course, tells you how many restrooms you need, and the same can be said for shelter. Finally, accommodation shows you how many hotels you need, and these can be placed pretty much anywhere, but you get bonus points for giving them a view of some of your paddocks for a bit of bonus visibility. When building anything related to these categories, you will see colours on your paths, which will be green when satisfied, and red when unsatisfied. Place buildings in the red zones, and your rating will go up. Simple as that. Alongside comforts, you also have approval, and this one is very simple to keep high. Keep your dinosaurs happy and healthy, and prevent any escapes or deaths, and you should be just fine. And finally on the graph you can see a red dotted line for path capacity. If your guest count reaches this line, you'll need to upgrade to larger paths to accommodate your guests and make your park easier to get around. On the amenities tab, you can see the rating for food, drink and shopping, as well as the different types of guests using these services. You want to build food, drink and shopping buildings in red zones, and inside of these buildings, select products and interior modules that satisfy the different types of guests. This all sounds really complicated, but all it means is you want to make as many of these little bars on the left, have a tick next to them as you can, and you can increase them by grabbing items with the matching symbol. Easy as that. As your pack grows, so will the need for more services and amenities. So keep on top of this and build everything up at once to avoid being held back by a certain thing. Your guest type will also change based on different attractions, so periodically check in on your amenities to make sure they are as optimised as they can be. If you keep all your dinos happy and healthy and keep all your guest needs satisfied, you'll start to pull in more and more money, and the more money you make, the higher your pack rating is, because as I said, we are living in a capitalist hellscape. If you keep on top of everything, you should steadily climb your income and your rating until you get to the illustrious 5 star rating and can either complete your challenge or keep going for fun. That's just about everything you need to know to get started in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Let me know any other questions you have in the comments below, leave a like if you did and subscribe for more content like this on all sorts of other strategy games. I'd like to take this time to thank supporters of the channel like Dominic Schmas and Adam T and of course Henry Tucker for their support at the Unclean Ones tier. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so here on YouTube, over on Twitch, or on Patreon. You get shoutouts at the end of videos, just like all of these wonderful people. Huge thanks to all supporters, one final thank you for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.